I think I'm on and I think you're going to be jumping on shortly. If it's Friday, it's Kate Richburg for beadshop.com for Free Tip Friday. I hope everybody's doing well. I'm going to grab my computer here and make sure that, um, there we go, so I'm on there. I can see myself here. I'm going to jump on and make sure that you guys can see me. I'm also going to share this broadcast, and you know, I always appreciate when you guys share and comment and all kinds of good stuff uh, for these videos, so I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, so I'm sharing right now, so it would be a great time for you to jump on and share this as well um, on free tip. Friday. There we go. So I've got that out. Thanks for being patient with me while I do that and share. Um, we're going to have a fun Friday today. It's great. I'm seeing everybody jump on, which is fantastic. I love it. I can't wait to see, uh, to show you guys uh, what I'm going to be making today. It's a little bit of an extension on what we did last week, a little bit, um, just because I have the same components that are sitting in front of me. So those are the um, components I'm going to be using as well. Um, join me. And I'm just sharing this one more time on my page. So I appreciate you hanging in there with me. But we really, I really do, getting this video out to more people who might like to see it is always, always great. Um, doing that, some great wire components. There we go. And I'm posting. Done and done. So thank you so much. Um, while everyone else is jumping on as well, I hope you guys enjoyed our Wednesday broadcast. Emily and I, we had a lot of fun playing with pearl knotting and floats with you on Wednesday. Um, I wanted to mention, so next week we've got a great new project coming up um, where we're marrying our tapestry project and our um, wrap bracelets. Our, our leather wrap bracelets projects together and we're calling it a 3D tapestry uh, project which is going to be great. That'll be up at the beginning of next week so you guys can see that before Facebook Live. And also on uh, Tuesday uh, of next week, uh, let me get the date, um, Tuesday the 31st, we're going to have it up uh, in our newsletter as well. I'm going to be doing a live broadcast from my studio. Um, we're doing a joint broadcast with um, Beadfest, and I'm going to do a little sneak peek about my class for Beadfest, my ring making class. So that'll be actually at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday. And that'll be actually on my page, the Kate Richburg Jewelry Educator page that you can go over and like um, and follow. And I'll also be linking it to this page, our beadshop.com page. So um, you'll be able to, uh, to find it here as well. So um, hopefully I'll see a bunch of you guys at 8.30 a.m. Uh, in my studio when I fire it up with my torch. So it's going to be real fun. And then, of course, we'll be back on board on Wednesday with that new tapestry looming wire um, uh, leather bracelet wrap kind of mashup. So it's going to be real fun. So uh, if I do say so myself. So it's great. It's great to have everybody here. Thank you so much for your kind comments um, and everything. It's great to have everyone here. Um, so uh, let me talk to you just real quick about some um, just some inspiration ideas. I had put it out into uh, our bead table, the bead table bead shop group about what you guys wanted to see. And you jumped in and you talked about, you gave me a whole list of great things that, um, that I put on my list for free tip Fridays and for Facebook Live. So thank you so much for that. Um, I also wanted to mention real quick, I just see our Gita is on. Gita is up uh, and posting as beadshop.com, our wonderful moderator from across the seas. So thank you so much, Gita, for adding those links um, into the comments there. So thank you so, so much, as always, for that. I did want to mention, um, as you hear me say on um, 
our Wednesday broadcasts as well. You can always find all of our Free Tip Fridays that are archived on our YouTube channel. There's a playlist for them all. You can also find them on our website um, right at the top navigation bar. It says Free Tip Friday. Click on those and you see everything in order. And you can also see all of those for our instructional Facebook Live broadcasts as well. So there's lots of ways. If you don't catch me live, you can always find us on YouTube, our Facebook page, or, of course, our website, beadshop.com. So that bit of business uh, is, is done. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about inspiration. And I brought something with me that I actually, it's, I always carry it in my bag. And you can see it's kind of this well-worn kind of leather tome looking, uh, looking uh, old planner. And actually, Emily gave me this piece so many years ago. And I love it, love it. And um, it's where I kind of corral all my ideas. And I wanted to share this with you. I'm going to turn the camera around and I want to give you a quick peek into my sketchbook because I thought that might be a fun way to start off this broadcast. So I'm going to turn the camera around. So bear with me here as I do that because you guys know on Friday, Fridays are always more of a little casual of a broadcast, right? Because I am working this camera on my own here, so thank you for bearing with me while I move things around. Um, there we go. Let me tighten that up. Yeah, Emily gave me this sketchbook so many, uh, I don't know, so many years ago it, it feels like it's been now, and um, I use it so, so much, but I thought I would, I would share this with you a little bit as a peek behind the scenes, um, because you know, as always, our Fridays are always a little more casual than our fancy, let me get my phone out of the way, make sure that it's on silent, um, our Fridays are always a little more casual than our big fancy Wednesday broadcasts. So here's my sketchbook, um, and it's just an old worn leather piece. And you can see I've got a couple of, I got a photo in here of me when I was uh, on set for one of my uh, TV shoots. I've got in here a circle template because I can never draw a circle. Um, I've got a couple of little uh, precious pieces of leather that my friend Cynthia Thornton painted for me. I don't know, a billion years ago, uh, probably, and I still haven't done anything with those, but I, I keep them in here because they're inspirational. I have some little bookmarks uh, here that I use sometimes to mark my pieces. And then I have a couple of just little sketchbooks that I, um, that I draw in, right? And so you can see uh, some of these are classes and designs and stuff that have come to fruition. And I am no sketch artist for sure, but it does help me kind of remember um, just things in general. And I have a whole bunch of these. When I fill it, um, I just fill it up and then I put it on my shelf and I come back and, and I... Um, and I consult it later. Sometimes I just kind of jump through it. Um, the, uh, the, the thing that I'm going to do today was I was thum thumbing through my sketchbook here, and I was um, looking, and I found kind of this funky little sketch that I had uh, a while back in my book. And um, it's this horseshoe armature, this horseshoe component um, that I used to make a lot a while back, and I wanted to remind myself of how to do it. So as I was sketching, going through, I said, oh, this piece, this will be a great piece to share with you guys today. So this is kind of how I just kind of document different things that, uh, that I want to do. And I love this grid, um, this grid stuff. You can see this is something my mom, my mom and I were working out a quilt pattern, you can see. Uh, so even quilt patterns are in here. And we talked about how do we make the squares and stuff. So there's all kinds of stuff. There's no rhyme, no reason. Um, I, I don't even organize it. I just kind of have it a, a free form kind of flow of ideas. So I thought you guys might like to see a little bit of a peek behind uh, behind the scenes. And then I usually have some, uh, some beloved pen 
in there um, that I just have and then I can just take out and start to uh, document my ideas. So that's what I've got going on here. So I wanted to share that with you, um, my beloved sketchbook. So coming out of that, let's go into the component that we're going to make today. I think that you guys um, were pretty stoked on, let me grab it because it's sitting up here. I wore it on Wednesday and I know a lot of you saw it there. Um, but this was the piece that I did on Wednesday. Um, not Wednesday. I wore on Wednesday. I did last Friday, right? And that's this um, um, kind of mishmash or mashup of different components. Some of the donuts, this wire wrapping here, the pie, and then this kind of meandering component here and kind of this freeform wire over the top. So you can find this um, on our blog, The Bead Table, and there's a link to it, uh, I believe, on our homepage on beadshop.com. And uh, you guys saw me kind of work the components, but you, I didn't actually complete and finish everything on air. So here is the finished piece, and again, it uh, mixes stringing, I strung on Softlex, and then added all of these components together. So. The component that we're going to do today kind of goes hand in hand with what I've got going on here. And we can do it as an earring or we can do it as a bracelet. Let me open up the blinds a little bit here, get a little, maybe make it a little bit brighter. Um, hopefully it's, you guys can see well enough. So, um, and this is, I just used 14 gauge wire here for this big meandering component along with the clasp, and then um, I used some 18 gauge here, some 24 gauge for wrapping. So it's a whole bunch of different um, different wires, and I used our new color of pear wire that we're carrying, our titanium. Okay, So I basically did not clean, uh, this is the desk that Emily sits at when she was here, so when she came I still had all of my free tip Friday stuff sitting on the desk so she put it all up uh, in a tray so it's all ready for me to work with um, so I'm just gonna get out my tools and keep going on this right so um, oh, I'm glad you guys like it thanks so much you know it was an old school uh, a real Kate Richburg throwback um, with those discs and that kind of meandering component um, wire was really kind of my first love in the jewelry world. Um, actually, tribal beads are, were my first love. And then I jumped into um, playing with wire, and then that led me into metal, and then I never, ever looked back. Okay. Um, so let me cut. Uh, I haven't even made one of these components in a while, so... You're going to have to bear with me a little bit while I while I play around and get the, the size right. But the base of this horseshoe that I'm going to make, let me get in a little bit tighter here. Um, the base is going to be an 18 gauge for the base of the armature. Now, you could use a different size. I could go down to 20 gauge or I could go up to... Um, to 16 gauge it just depends but I didn't want these components to be too bulky so that's why I chose this 18 gauge so I'm gonna lop off a piece of wire uh, from um, my spool here and again this is 18 gauge pair of wire in um, the titanium color and I'm gonna straighten everything out and I think I'm gonna cut a piece that's about three inches okay so I'm going to cut that off. And then I'm going to use my 24 gauge, and my 24 gauge I'm going to wrap around my um, my 18 gauge. Okay. Now this is a basic that you start a lot of different projects this way. You know, it's kind of like when you're cooking. It's like brown some onions in olive oil. This is kind of that same thing. It's like get a piece of wire and wrap some wire around it. So let's see, that's one foot. I'm going to go with maybe 18, 18 inches if I can get this wire off the spool. Okay, there we go. Just like so. Bam. Okay. 
And again, I'm going to straighten this out using my nylon jaw pliers because we want our wire to be as straight and as unwrinkled as possible. Okay. So I'm going to start in the center because I'm not really sure how long I need to do this wire wrapping because I'll be honest, I haven't practiced and made a, um, a tester component. So we're just going to make that tester right now. So I'm going to just wind. I'm going to take that 20 gauge. I'm holding that 18 gauge kind of on the horizon line here and I'm wrapping the 24 gauge kind of at a right angle here, right? And so I'm wrapping, I'm wrapping. Let me get in real tight so you guys can kind of see my hands blocking this a little bit. So I want you to be able to see it here. That might be a little bit better. And wrap and wrap. And I'm keeping the tension between this hand, my left hand, and my wrapping hand, my right hand. Okay. <clears throat> wrap, wrap, wrap. And I think I want to get at least an inch of wrapping on this side. And if I need to push my wraps together a little bit to make sure that there's no gapping, you want to do that periodically so it's not too difficult. Okay. And again, thank you so much, everybody. It's great to see all of you popping on from different places from around the world and around the country. It's great to bring everybody together around the bead table. So thank you so much for, uh, for joining me. Let me measure this real quick. I'm just shy of an inch, so let me get to an inch there. Wrap, wrap, wrap. And I like this titanium color a lot because it has kind of an antique look already. So you don't have to um, you don't have to uh, antique it, you know, after the fact. Though you could, it would look really great um, in our um, bare copper to um, to wire wrap. To, to wrap and then antique in the liver of sulfur. So, oh, thanks, Lorraine. I saw your comment pass by about my wedding set. This is actually uh, my mother-in-law's wedding set. So, thank you for noticing. I'm uh, so um, honored to be to be wearing it. So, thank you. I, it's a little reminder of her of her on my finger. So I'm going to um, wrap and wrap and wrap here, wrap and wrap, plus it's vintage, and you know how I like vintage, so it works for me. I'm going to go about an inch and a half all the way around, okay, and just to mention, you know, the, the my band, my wedding band, this is actually one um, I made, I made Chris and I, our bands, uh, before we got married, I made them out of metal clay, precious metal clay. So, uh, they're wearing beautifully well. And my sweet husband, he said, if I'm going to wear a ring for the rest of my life, it better be a ring that my wife made me. So I made our little bands. I've always been a simple kind of a wedding band, kind of a gal. So, but it's nice. It, I think goes nicely with my additions. So, uh, I've got an inch and a half here, and it said, um, yeah, and Rosie, that's a great question. Rosie asked, do you have to wire wrap the armature, or can you make the component without the wire wrap? And I'll make them both. I'll make one with the wire wrap, and then we'll make a bare one as well. So I think they'll work both ways. Okay, so now that I've got an inch and a half um, here, I'm going to grab something to wind or kind of push or shape, I guess is the right word, um, the armature around. So I'm gonna get one of my favorite mandrels, which is my Sharpie marker, right? And I'm just gonna bring it around the tip of this skinny Sharpie um, and see how I like the look of that, right? Even it out. That's not very even, is it? That's pretty even. There we go. And so this component, if I measure it now that I've kind of bent it in half, 
is about now three quarters of an inch in length. And I, I like that. So we're gonna make our, our 18 gauge piece. We're gonna wrap the 24 gauge around for about an inch and a half there, okay? So now uh, I'm just gonna clip this extra wire away. So I can probably get away with next time cutting about a foot of wire, all right? And I'm just gonna clip that away and just wind it right around and I'm going to clip this here and wind it around like that. Okay, so it's tight. Now I need to make some loops. Now the idea of this design is that I have a series of these horseshoes kind of connecting with loops going on and on and on. So I want to make my loop large enough so that it's going to fit on this piece. So I actually don't want to guess that. So I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to make a second one of those. Okay, so I can measure, uh, I can measure my, my loops as I, as I make them. So last time I cut, I don't know, three inches, I think, of wire. This time I'm going to cut about two and a half inches because about an inch and a half of that is going to be wound and then I have another inch to play with with my loops. So as I experiment, you know, and I can get my notebook and I can kind of note my little, um, my little discoveries as I go along, but this time I'm cutting uh, a little bit less. And this is exactly how, when I'm working out my designs, this is exactly how I, uh, I document it or I start to play around with it. Again, I said also, instead of 18 inches, I can probably get away with about 12 inches of wire. So let me cut 12 inches this time. Okay, cut it there. And again, I'm gonna start in the middle of the wire and I'm gonna go a little bit faster this time as I wrap. Now, you can also, as a kind of a faster way of doing this, Sometimes I put my wire in a drill. Um, I put this wire um, uh, in a drill, the drill bit, and I put my other wire also in the drill bit, turn the drill on, and it, it wraps and, and winds for me. Um, it's kind of a, a trick that I've done for a lot of years, but this actually goes pretty quickly, so you don't need to worry about the the drill or a Dremel. You could do that with the Dremel too. Maybe someday I'll, I will uh, demonstrate how that goes. So I'm going to wind and wind, whoops, making sure that one little coil uh, is one next to the other like so. Let me measure before I get too crazy. And it looks like, Ellen, you had a question about our, my wire cutters. I am using our Zuron wire cutters. And yes, they do cut as perfectly flush as you're gonna find. Cutters inherently have a little bit of a pinch to them, even though these are super flush, heavy duty cutters. I use them to cut actually up to 10 gauge wire. Um, you're always gonna have a tiny little burr that you're going to have to, um, a file away. Um, the only way really to make jump rings that don't have a burr is to saw them. Okay, but this Zeron flush cutter is as good uh, of a flush cutter as I found for cutting jump rings and you just use that cutter and flip it back and forth, back and forth. Okay, so <clears throat> Let me just continue to wrap this around and wrap this around. Gloria, I'm not sure why you're getting an echo. Is everybody else's sound okay? If you are, you may just want to exit out of the video. Pretty much when you're watching Facebook Live videos, the best way to fix any of your issues is to go out of the video, X out, and then come on back in and usually that writes itself um, for for those issues. Um, I'm close, I'm almost to an inch and a half. Notice how I've grabbed it here with my um, plier, my nylon jaw plier. If my hands are having trouble 
pinching this, okay? I can hold it with the tool, it's a little bit easier on my hands, and then I can control and wind this around. So that's another good tip. And see how the side view, it really is grabbing that wire so there's no wiggling around, okay? So let's see if I've gotten it close. It looks like that 12 inches has just about given me close to about an inch and a half of wrapping. I don't want to over wrap. So I'm there. Oh, I'm super close. It really is going to give me almost exactly that inch and a half with no waste, which is a good thing. There we go. So let me press these sides in. I'm going to use my bent chain nose this time for that. Scoot it around, scoot it around, scoot it around here. Put that in. Okay. And, um, yeah, I do make jump rings on several uh, broadcasts. Skeeta, thank you so much for linking them. And I use this very, uh, this very plier, so... Um, or this very cutter, rather. So uh, let me measure this again to see what I have for that. And yep, that gives me uh, almost exactly, look at that, right on the money, maybe like two coils short of the inch and a half. So perfect. I'm going to go ahead and shape this guy just like I did the other one. And there we go. So I've got this horseshoe and that horseshoe. Yeah, and they look about the same size there. Okay, so I'm going to um, come in and make the loops for these. Okay, so um, I'm going to bend at a right angle here because I need my loops to go this way. So I'm going to bend it and I'm going to bend this one both in the same direction. Okay? And can you see how I bent them both? Right there at the coil, where the coil ends. Alrighty. Then I need to figure out um, how much I need to leave. Now I need these loops to be pretty big because I want that loop to go around this coiled portion and I want it to have movement. So let me measure how much I've got here. This is about a half inch. Okay. So this is probably going to give me a little bit of a large loop, but I'm just going to get flush cut the end so it's nice and um, even. Double check my measurement. It's about a half inch, maybe just a hair short, maybe about a sixteenth of an inch short. Then I'm going to get my round nose plier and I'll come in, I'll come in from this side and I'm going to roll up and over. Well, I can't really do it that way. I'm going to do it this way. Up and over the top to create a nice size loop. And can you see that there? That looks pretty good. I think that size is going to work. I'm just going to slide this through and make sure. Yep, see how there's that's good movement there? So I know that I can um, I can cut these all at about a half inch. And sometimes it helps me if I do kind of all of these and, you know, I'd make all the horseshoes, then I'd, you know, I'd wrap, make all the horseshoes, then I'd bend them all, and then I'd mark them all um, in a, um, mark them all at a half inch. Just that little end shy of a half inch. So I'll use my permanent marker, my Sharpie marker here. And I know that's going to be where I cut it. And here will be where I cut it. Right. Right there. Okay. 
I could also just cut myself um, a piece of wire that's a half inch long. This might make it even faster. I cut it here and then I just hold this up to the end and make that flush. I hold this up to my wire right there and I know that acts as my little stopper so I know where to cut my wire. That's even faster. Sometimes I do that too. All right, so that goes right there. That cuts, so that one's cut. And let me cut this other one. Okay. And line it up with that bend and clip. Alrighty. Now I'll just go ahead and I will make this loop up and over the top, always aiming for about the same place on your plier. There we go, and those loops look pretty round and pretty even. This one is not quite as round as I want it to be. Sorry, I'm out of frame. There we go. Now, you have some choices. You always have choices. Um, you know, some design ideas. I um, always like a little bit of hammering here. So, to, I don't know, to make it look a little more interesting. So I'm going to just hang this off the side of my bench block, this loop, and I'm going to flatten it just a little. It also work hardens that loop. Can you see the difference there, how that's been flattened? Okay. And I'm going to turn this around and flatten the other side. So it has a little bit of flare, you know? A little bit of flare to it. Then I'm going to close these off. All right. Now <clears throat> I'm ready to put this one aside for the moment. And I'm also going to kind of shape them just a little bit so that the loops are straight and that my horseshoe is flared out a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to just maybe reshape it on here. So I'll set that one aside, and now I will make this second one. So I'm going to loop it up and over the top, again being consistent at where I grab the uh, loop with the plier, so I have a nice, so I have loops that are nice and the same. And again, I've used the flush cutter on the end of these wires, so I've got a nice straight of flush, uh, across flush cut as well. So there are my loops. Those look pretty good, if I do say so myself. And I'll go ahead and close that up. And I'll give that a little tap. And turn this. Give it a little tap. Okay. And then... Kind of make sure that these are right. Get my good old Sharpie marker back out and make sure that it's nice and shaped around there. You could use a wood dowel too, right? Doesn't have to be a Sharpie. But I usually have a Sharpie sitting right at my desk. So now these are ready to connect together. So what I'll do is I'll just come in, I'll lift one of these loops slide this guy on, lift the other loop, slide the other side on, turn it around, and close those loops up. Notice how I'm using my bent chain nose for this, and they sit really nicely. So look at how nice that wire component looks. And I'll just continue going and making this little horseshoe link loop um, you know, around and around. So if I'm doing a bracelet, two loops measure hmm, about a, just a little, about an inch and a half or so. So let's see, if I were making seven inches, let's see, two, 
four, six. I'd need about probably eight of these loops probably. And then just depending on how I want to close it, I'd probably close it by putting, um, I didn't grab one of those, but I would probably use one of my um, um, clasps, uh, a jump ring, and then our nice swivel clasp, I think, probably, um, probably on the end. Pretty easy to do. Let's make one that doesn't have um, any uh, winding around, okay? And we can also maybe bump up our uh, wire gauge size. <coughs> Let me do this one with 16 gauge, shall we? I'm going to cut it. Give me a nice flush cut at the end. And I'm going to um, do uh, another, um, what did I say? Two and a half inches. I'll cut it right there. And you could, I guess you could loop it through. Um, and then uh, there was a question here. Could you um, slide the component onto the next before making your loops? You could. You know, you do whatever um, assembly line work, however it works for you. I might, for my efficiency, I might make all of these um, first and then connect them all together. But, you know, you do what works for you. Not a problem. So I'm going to bring this around just like I did here, okay? And before I do anything else, there's my horseshoe connector. I'm going to hammer this out a little bit just to kind of um, planish that loop there. And I'm going to have that planishing kind of taper, um, taper down so that most of the planishing is up top here. And I'll flip it over. Again, light jewelry taps, not a crazy amount of, you know, crazy hammering, but just enough to get yourself a, a little bit of shape there. Now I'm going to come in, I could lay this over the top, um, just so that I know um, that it's the right length, and I'll bend. That should leave me about an inch and a half, or a half inch rather, of, of wire to make my loop. And again, since this is heavier gauge wire, the scale is going to be a little bit different, but that's okay. I think that's all right. I can double check and make sure that this link and this link are working together. Let me see. Yep, they look about the right size. They look correct. And let's see that these are half inch lengths. I have that little piece of wire I was using as my measuring guide. And that's actually a little shorter, isn't it? I think that's a half inch. Let me just double check if that's the right piece of wire. Yeah, it's a little shorter. So let me see. Um, I'll cut these even. And let's see what the loops look like. The loops are going to be a little bit smaller this time around. Um, this is a uh, 16 gauge, so I popped up a gauge size. So I probably should have cut my wire a little bit longer to make up for the larger size and gauge. And can you see how that loop is just too small to fit around? Um, what I've got going on here. So we go back to the drawing board and we make one that's bigger. But this link, now I just have a link I can use for something else. It's not time wasted at all. I can bring these together um, like this, right? And I could make a jump ring to connect it instead. So let me just um, make lemons or make lemonade out of lemons or whatever it is they say. I've got my trusty knitting needle here that I use as a dowel a lot to make jump rings. Um, so uh, I think it was Ellen who wanted to see it. I'm not sure. Um, but I'll go ahead and make one anyway. Um, this is 
16 gauge and this knitting needle is maybe a size, I'll tell you the millimeter size of it. It's just the one that I always have. Um, the diameter of this, it's about a four millimeter knitting needle, maybe just a little bit shy, 3.8 millimeters across in here. And so I'm just going to wrap a few of these few loops just like I did you know here right I was wrapping the the wire around the 24 gauge wire around the 18 gauge wire it's the same thing I'm just taking this uh, 16 gauge and wrapping it around this metal knitting needle here so I'll pull that out and with my cutters I want to get in real tight so you guys can see this I'm going to use the flush side of my cutter to clip like this, flip it over so the flush side is uh, going to be towards the cut, and clip it. So there's one ring right there. I'm going to do the same thing. Now I have kind of this little smushed end of wire, so I need to clip that away with the flush side. Turn it over and clip, right? So this is what I call my clip and flip kind of action going on here. All right, so clip and flip. All right. So then I would uh, just come in and let me open this up a little bit. And I could use a jump ring to connect. Okay. I'll open that up. Slide this guy on. close it up. There we have it. So now this wood, as was mentioned earlier, would make a great dangle for a um, for a, an earring. And I've got our titanium um, our niobium gunmetal um, ear wires that we carry that are a perfect uh, match with this uh, titanium wire. I could just open that sucker up and slide those on and close that up. So now this is great just, just on its own like that or I still have sitting here from last week um, a bead from my, um, from my little adventure in that wire, that piece earlier. So let me see if I can make a little uh, head pin for that. So one of the things that I do a lot is, this is 20 gauge here. I'm just going to hammer the end of this 20 gauge. Let me get kind of tight so you can see it. I can make a little head pin, so bear with me here as I hammer. I want to splay this out as much as I can. Can you see how I've kind of flattened the end of that wire out? Let's see if this stays on. And look, ta-da, it does. Check that out. And then I can come in and I can dangle it right on the inside. Looks like I need to make my loop about that big. So I'm just going to bend. I don't know. This is all. I'm making this all up as I go along. That looks about right. Bend at a right angle. Flip away my extra. I don't need this loop to be too big. But I'm going to roll this up and over the top using kind of the tip of my pliers so I don't have a huge loop. I'll show you the side view here in a second. There we go. And the end of that, um, the end of that wire is a little sharpy sharp. Just like a little, just a little. So 
I'm going to get my nail file that sometimes I do my nails with before I go on. <laughs> so I, I don't really. Uh, I'm just going to uh, file that. You could also do it with a metal file if you had a metal file. Or you could do it with a piece of sandpaper. Um, but that little touch of filing um, just makes things not so treacherous. Especially since we planish that down to be so thin. The paddle's a little sharp. But if you just file it just a touch, um, it's going to be a lot nicer. Okay, so here's that, here's that little piece. So let's connect it. So I kind of have to open this thing up a little bit to um, to attach everything. So remember where I had my jump ring open, or I closed my jump ring there. So I'm going to open it back up using my bent chain and my regular chain nose. Okay, like that. I'm going to slide one end off. I'll slide that sucker on. Whoops. I said slide that sucker on. Thank you very much. Go in there. Oh, come on now. I can do it. This is when live starts to get hilarious, right? Let me open this up a little bit more. Go on there. Come on now. Who's the boss? Everybody help me out here. Who's the boss of this wire? Me. <laughs> Come on now. There we go. There's got to be a smarter way about doing this, but I haven't gotten it gotten there yet. There we go. That's in. And let me put the ear wire on. I guess I could have tried to open it up and just put that dangle on there, but I needed the room. I needed the space. There we go. Isn't it always when you're doing a demo, your wire doesn't want to cooperate? Okay. So let's see how this looks. Let's make sure that I've got enough movement, that it's not too funny. <clears throat> you straighten out that one little link there isn't quite as straight as I want it to be. There we go. That makes, yes, there's the movement I like. And I can just lay that there and you guys can see how that looks. Let me get in a little bit tighter so you can see it. Okay. So that's not too bad. Maybe I'd make this a little shorter, but maybe not. I don't know. I think it looks all right. I could do that same design with this wrapped one if I wanted, right? But I think that this earring um, is actually pretty cute. It has kind of a really architectural feel to it, I think. Um, you could also uh, wire wrap, you know, like I did with these last week, right? I could make just this plain connector and then wire wrap a bead across it, right? And then I could connect them all together. So this simple little horseshoe, I think, has a lot of applications. Um, and all you need, you guys, I'll just go over what I used one more time. I'll point here with my knitting needle. Um, this armature here is 18 gauge at the base here. And then it's wire wrapped with 24 gauge here. And then this guy, uh, just the earring, is this is 16 gauge here. I used 20 gauge for that head pin. And I also used 16 gauge. I made a coil of those to make our um, to make our jump rings. And then some of this has been hammered, hammered out just for a little bit of interest and texture. And then I used the um, niobium uh, ear wire um, with the um, with the three millimeter ball um, as a perfect match for that. You could you could wire wrap gemstones uh, around the perimeter of that for sure, Lynn. It would really really look nice. I think um, it would look great. And just to get this diameter, however large you want this horseshoe to be, just grab different sized dowels. You know, we have the dowels that we use for our Viking knit chain project, or you could just go ahead and look 
uh, around, I could use a Sharpie marker that's a little bit bigger. Remember, I cut about two and a half inches here, so maybe I'd want to cut maybe three inches, three and a half inches, but, you know, experiment and get your, your design book, your good old book, and, you know, write some notes in there, and I'm going to write some notes in this right now so I remember when I am writing for my uh, for my blog post. So I did two and a half inches of 18 gauge wire and I used maybe I'm gonna say 14 inches of the 24 gauge for wrapping and that's the armature right there. Uh, there we go and then I used a 16 gauge for the plain armature. And that's all there is to documenting, you guys. This is by no means a Da Vinci, but it is a good um, reminder of, um, of what I did. Component. There we go. And uh, yeah, you could attach this to chain. You could do so much. Tammy, I think that's great. Graduated sizes would look great. I can't wait to see um, how you guys how you guys use it. Lorraine, you had a question um, about making that infinity, so I'll make it for you. It's it's not difficult, and it's the infinity. If I'm not mistaken, um, Lorraine, it's this one that I used on the end, right? This little figure eight. I use this all the time, and you could do this figure eight um, and make the loops the same size and connect them that way, um, and then you know dangle this as an earring from the top of that or whatever. So this is a really helpful little component. So I'll make one more of those for you here. So it doesn't matter what um, what size uh, wire you use. I'll make uh, one in 16 gauge, if I can find my 16 gauge, there it is, right here. So the way I do this is it's all kind of random, I think, um, when I make them, um, though you could start measuring a little bit better. Um, I'll do a flush cut on the end, like I did before, so it's not a pointy cut, but a flush cut. Cover the end of that wire so it doesn't fly up and hit you in the head. And then I'm just going to make uh, make a loop and I'm going to work on the end off of this wire, okay? And decide about how large you want that sucker to be. And so that looks that looks about right for me. And then I kind of need to guesstimate. Um, this is a pretty big loop and a pretty heavy gauge. So I'm guessing I need to leave, I'm going to leave three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to go here three quarters and I'm going to cut it about right there. Okay, that should give me a loop maybe that's close to being even. Let's see what it looks like. I'll get my round nose plier and I'll come in and no, I was so way off. Look at how off I was on that. So maybe more like a half inch ish maybe. So let me cut that off. Let me just give it a measure. I bet it's going to be too short, but we'll see what happens. These infinity connectors, I rarely, I'm telling you, I rarely make them the same size. And if I have trouble getting this around, you know what? Use your chain nose to kind of help you make that last little turn, that last little bend. And yeah, this looks like it's pretty even. So it's about a maybe cut an inch and a half of wire, make that first loop, and then cut that second bit of wire down to just a hair over a half inch. And that should be uh, about the, the, the right size. Now what I did last week, and you don't have to, especially if you um, want it to be kind of round, um, you can just kind of leave it like this. But I'll give it just a little, whoops, that didn't, didn't go well. I'll give it a little bit of tapping just to make sure I'm flattening it out or if I want it planished or shaped a little bit I could just hammer the top of those loops just to add a little bit of strength to them. Okay, 
and then I'll close them up nicely and it's nice and closed and then I can do whatever I want to with this. I could turn this into an earring kind of like what Tammy was saying. You could do a bunch of graduated ones. I could make this bottom one maybe a little bit bigger and then I could you know wrap some stones or something around the bottom. There's all kinds of stuff that you could do with this component. So I hope you guys dug this horseshoe component that I pulled together for you guys out of my out of my archives, my my idea archives. Um, I'd love to see how you take this idea and run with it this weekend. Gosh, I've made a big old mess here, haven't I? Well, I'm going to post uh, some of the uh, dimensions again on the blog, so you can um, you can take a look at those guys uh, at your leisure. And as always, you can rewatch this um, broadcast uh, for as many ideas uh, as you can uh, as you can come up with. So it's pretty cool. I hope you dug you dug the. Um, this and yeah it's just a simple it's just you sitting down with a couple of gauges of wire three gauges of wire and your tools and just jump in you know we don't need to have a lot of rigmarole or a lot of fanfare um you know you could you could uh just play around so i cannot wait to see what uh what you make and again yes thank you so much you guys for all of your kind compliments it's very nice of you to say and as always yes thank you Gita for your um wonderful linking of uh all of the products and all of the things that you guys uh would use for this project so let me get you can only see me peeking there so let me open up um the the shot there and let's make it a little, there we go, make this tighten up here so I'm not moving around. There we go. I think we're all set. Perfect. Alrighty. Well, you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me on this free tip Friday. I'll see you Tuesday uh, on my Kate Richburg Jewelry Educator page. I'll also link it here on the Bead Shop page. You can watch me Tuesday morning at 8.30 Pacific time when I fire it up and give you a little sneak peek into one of my classes at Bead Fest. So for those of you who don't often watch me um, solder, you'll, it'll be a fun treat for you. We're going to size uh, a bezel for a cabochon. That's a little tip that I'm going to be sharing So uh, on Tuesday morning. And then on Wednesday, uh, uh, Emily and I have that mashup between tapestry looming and our leather wrap bracelet. So I'm super excited to share. Uh, Emily and I kind of jumped in with both feet with this project and it features a brand new product that we're going to be launching on Tuesday, which are dragon scales. I know that you cannot wait to get your hands on those dragon scales. We can't wait to let you get your hands on those either. We're really super excited. And we've got some with really interesting and unique finishes, so I can't wait to share. Anyway, thank you again so much. I hope I covered everything uh, for you guys and have a fantastic weekend. And I'll see you guys next week. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.